Good afternoon, and thank you all for, to be here, for being here. I certainly want to thank uh, all of our colleagues here in St. Paul who work for the city and our St. Paul Public Schools, uh, and certainly thank my colleague across the river, uh, Mayor Fry, uh, Minneapolis Fire Chief Tyner, Public Works Director Keller, and Interim Superintendent Cox for being here. Um, I am joined by uh, St. Paul Fire Chief uh, Butch Inks, Public Works Director Sean Kershaw, and Superintendent uh, Joe Gothard. We are bracing for what is likely to be one of the largest snowstorms in Minnesota history. We expect it to have major impacts across the Twin Cities on every aspect of life, every aspect of city operations uh, for the rest of this week. This snow won't just impact St. Paul or just Minneapolis, so we're engaging in a coordinated effort to prepare our communities for what's to come. To, th to that end, St. Paul Public Schools Superintendent Joe Gothard and Minneapolis Public Schools Interim Superintendent Cox are here to share our plans for our students. And Public Works Director Kershaw and Pu Minneapolis Public Works Director Kelleher will speak to our respective plans to declare snow emergencies in our communities. The projections show an unprecedented three-day weather event, which is why St. Paul will declare back-to-back -back snow emergencies in our city. Um, our ask to all residents is that you prepare now. That means limiting non-essential travel and working from home whenever possible. It means making sure that we have essential supplies, including food and medicine for the week, and reviewing the snow emergency parking rules, which can be found at www.stpaul.gov snow. Please spread the word to your neighbors and help them prepare as well. We also ask that you be patient with our road crews, who will be working nonstop to plow snow, many working 24-hour shifts to do so. Our top priority is keeping our roads clear to prevent accidents and allow our first responders to safely navigate arterial streets. With that, I'll turn it over to Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Carter, and thank you to both Twin Cities for the partnership here. Uh, as Mayor Carter mentioned, we are preparing for what will likely be an historic snow event. We've got multiple departments and multiple jurisdictions, both Minneapolis and St. Paul, doing everything possible to make sure that we are prepared, regardless of what ultimately happens. We're expecting somewhere between 15 and 21 inches of snow. Uh, that is a significant amount of snow, needless to say, over just a couple of days. Uh, and in preparation uh, for that likelihood, as Director Kelleher said yesterday, we intend and will be declaring a snow emergency uh, tomorrow morning on Wednesday to go into effect uh, tomorrow night. As Mayor Carter mentioned, plan ahead. Uh, the way that you can protect yourself is by planning ahead. Uh, hopefully you're able to work from home remotely or virtually. If not, make sure to plan your route. Uh, as far as parking your car, if you can get it into a personal garage, do so. If you're able to get it into a surface lot and off the street, do so. If you're not able to get it to one of those locations, the city will be making available approximately 1,600 spaces in both garages and lots around the city, and Director Kelleher can give some additional information on that. Uh, but, but what you see uh, today uh, again, is preparation. What you see today is cooperation between multiple different entities uh, from uh, schools to city uh, to public works, both Minneapolis and St. Paul doing everything that we can to keep you all safe. Uh, and before I, I pass this off to uh, our superintendents, uh, I want to give a, a huge thank you to everyone that is participating in what uh, will likely be an historic snow event. Uh, if you have a chance to thank the individual, the person that is operating one of these plows, these heavy pieces of machinery, please do so. It takes a whole lot of skill to operate these things, and they're doing so under tremendously difficult situations and circumstances. And by the way, they're doing it like 24 hours a day, uh, and perhaps as much as seven days this coming week. So this is going to be a pretty significant endeavor, but you know we're all going to be working and doing everything possible to attack it head on. Uh, and with that. Uh, I will turn it over to Superintendent Gothard and Superintendent Cox. Thank you, Mayor Fry. This is a historic storm. I don't think I have to repeat that, what we are about to say. And, you know, we want to be as proactive as possible, giving our families a chance to plan. That's one of the things I hear often. Why do school districts make the choice so late or early in the morning, whichever it might be? 
On Wednesday and Thursday, St. Paul Public Schools will hold e-learning days. Students will be sent home from school today with their iPads and other learning materials so they're ready to learn online with their teachers and classmates for the next two days. On Friday, we will have a snow day. Some people call it an old school snow day uh, with no e-learning. This will be allow families and staff to have time away. The last thing I want to do is have people wake up and wonder how they're going to log in, getting cleaned up, and making sure that their safety and they're able to dig out, dig out their neighbors if that's what it takes, uh, but they're able to do it safely on Friday. So far this year, St. Paul Public Schools has had two e-learning days. This week with two more, that will leave us one more for the end of the school year. And we have to remember March many times is our most, uh, our snowiest month. I want to thank our partners at St. Paul Public, um, City of St. Paul and Public Works, as, long, as well as our partners across the river in Minneapolis. Um, your support is uh, incredible right now. And I also have to mention that on Wednesday and Thursday, our cancellations, really important I mention this, uh, include our Discovery, Discovery Club child care program, community education classes, athletics, and our after school programs. And again, I want to thank our, our partners from both Minneapolis and, and the city of St. Paul, uh, Public Works. And just so you know, we're in constant communication around events like this one. Uh, and that's why we thought it was extra important for us to come out together today and share with the community what our plans are for this historic storm. And with that, I'll turn it over to my partner in Minneapolis, Interim Superintendent Rochelle Cox. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here today as a partner as we work to keep both of our cities safe. I want to thank you uh, to both uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul Public Works for helping. Um, and we know they have a gigantic uh, responsibility ahead of them these next few days. We're grateful that our students at Minneapolis Public Schools can keep learning even during severe weather. Um, as Minneapolis Public Schools will move to e-learning for all three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. All students should remain home and most staff will be asked to do the same. If parents feel like their students need a snow day during that ex this ex extraordinary event, that is their call. But MPS will continue to keep focus on learning and teaching and make that available to our students. Families who choose not to have their students participate in e-learning will follow the um, usual attendance uh, procedures that they use. Just a brief reminder that this will also mean MPS uh, uh, sponsored programs like Minneapolis Kids, Community Education, Adult Basic Ed, and Early Childhood programs will also be closed. We are working with the Minnesota State High School League on navigating any scheduled playoffs, and we appreciate and thank you for your patience as we winter this storm. And thanks again to our friends at Minneapolis, at, at Minneapolis, the city of Minneapolis. I'm going to turn it over to St. Paul Public Works Director um, Kershaw. Thank you. Um, I want to repeat some of the messages that were said earlier and acknowledge what enormous aspect of teamwork this situation requires. Teamwork between cities, teamwork between entities, teamwork between departments, um, and especially the great teamwork, as Mayor Fry said, that's demonstrated by our plow drivers and operators. They're going to be out in this um, weather um, helping to keep us safe um, in these unusual circumstances. Um, the first thing is that, um, as, the, as Mayor Carter said, we are going to do back-to-back snow emergencies. Um, it's important that everybody go to stpaul.gov slash snow. At that site, you can sign up for text alerts, and you can um, link to our map that will show you where you can park at any time. It is critical that people go to stpaul.gov slash snow to stay informed on what will happen. And we will be as transparent as possible. The goal of the first phase will not be el to eliminate all of the snow. It will still be snowing. The goal of the first phase is to make the streets in St. Paul safe and passable for our emergency vehicles. The goal of the second phase will be to remove all the snow that we can from that. And that may take longer than a traditional snow emergency. So please go to those websites um, to stay informed, to sign up, and you will receive updates that will tell you exactly what you do at any moment. Um, the second point is that we are in St. Paul suspending um, garbage and recycling service on Thursday and on Friday. So we've been working closely with Eureka and with our haulers on Thursday in St. Paul and on Friday in St. Paul. Please do not put your carts out. And for those people who had gar uh, garbage and recycling today, pre please bring them in off the streets. 
The last point is that we will be making about 6,000 parking spaces available for free in downtown St. Paul. If uh, folks don't have a place to move their vehicle, you can go to our website, stpaul.gov slash snow. In the press release, that will show you exactly which lots that you can go to. Um, and I'm excited to introduce uh, my counterpart, Margaret Anderson Kelleher. Thank you, Director Kershaw. Um, well, good afternoon. We are preparing for something that we have not seen in a very long time, and that is a record amount of snow. In Minneapolis, that means a uh, thousand miles of street to be plowed, which is equivalent to 3,200 lane miles, meaning we could plow from Minneapolis to Anchorage, Alaska, to give a sense of the scale of what we're dealing with. Now, we are under winter parking restrictions in Minneapolis. When the snow emergency is called tomorrow morning, which I plan to do uh, as early as possible, what will happen is we go into the snow emergency rules. The one-sided parking in Minneapolis will help us be able to get that side that's open clear as quickly as possible. We are going to be doing that work uh, the minute it starts snowing, and we will continue to do that. So we are calling a snow emergency at this point. We will continue to evaluate whether we need to call a second snow emergency in Minneapolis. Uh, where people can find information about the snow emergency is minneapolis.gov forward slash snow. They can also use the 311 app and they also can call 311. We have done something uh, unique and that is finding parking spaces that are available for folks. So right now we have approximately 1600 spaces open as of today and people can feel free to put their cars there. Uh, they have to just get them out by Tuesday around 5 p.m. to get them out of that lot. And so the lots I will go over with you again. The, we would encourage people to first, if possible, use the Vineland Walker ramp at 727 Vineland Place. It is covered parking. It has the most number of spots at this point. Farmer's Market lot is at 225 East Lindale Avenue. Salvation Army lot is in the North Loop area, 4th uh, Street North, and that is 601 North 4th Street. The Lynn Lake lot in the uh, area of Uptown, it's called the Garfield lot, 2940 Garfield Avenue. The Basilica lot is open, but we would encourage people to begin to use that, and we actually are directing people away from that lot until after Ash Wednesday uh, concludes Ash Wednesday services at the Basilica tomorrow night. And then uh, we do know, we are aware in Minneapolis of two private lot owners opening their lots right now for free parking. Seven points in Uptown, which is 1375 West 31st Street, and the Mosaic Art Parking Ramp, 1340 Lagoon Avenue. And we are thankful that those private lot owners have opened those spaces as well. We are continuing to work on even more parking for people. We know how important getting your vehicle off the street is. I just want to reiterate one more time. A snow emergency being called is a parking management tool. We are plowing streets. We will have, we have full complement. We are ready to go. We have our equipment ready to go. When this snow starts fall, falling, we will be out there. We just ask for patience. It's going to take longer to do some of the things we normally do. Normally, we're removing snow from corners. Normally, we are getting snow out of downtown. It is going to take a few days to get those things done because of the volume of snow that we will be seeing. All right. Thank you. I think we're ready for questions. So uh, we are working very closely with both our, our internal city uh, unsheltered team and Hennepin County. And Hennepin County's unsheltered team has been doing outreach to be able to make uh, the offer for beds. There are beds available right now. And so we are just working very closely with the county, our county partners, to get out there and hope that people can move to shelter because this is going to be 
extreme and it's going to get cold. Uh, that is the other part of this storm. It will get colder on Friday and that will add a layer of complexity. We're also working with our Department of Emergency Management in end Excel Energy in case there are power outages. We are working to potentially provide some warming spaces for residents in Minneapolis and more information will come on that should it be needed. Um, I do not, but we can get back to you on that. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I anticipated the same question. Uh, our homeless assistance response team, uh, our heart team, uh, which exists, which we've created in recent years, you know well, uh, which exists in our Department of Safety and Inspections, is doing outreach, uh, same as they always do, uh, helping to facilitate transitioning people who are sheltering outdoors into indoor spaces. I do not have that same answer on exactly how many beds are available, but I know that our teams are out uh, engaging folks and talking to folks directly. So we know that a few people have taken advantage of the parking spaces already. I think that when snow starts to fall, and it may be snowing when we walk out of here, that's when it gets very real for people. And so encouraging people to, as early as possible, get those spaces, work together with your neighbors. I think almost all of the spaces we are offering right now are on bus lines. And so if people need to come and drop their car off, there is an option for that. But the longer you wait, the harder it's going to get to be, not necessarily because the spaces will be filled, but just the very basics of the volume of snow and getting through the snow, uh, it will be harder for even, I suspect, Metro Transit. Yeah, so uh, the response volume most likely will increase, uh, but what's super helpful for us is is if they can stay home, staying off the roads is helpful, um, uh, preparing their, their walks and, and shoveling, but but also the, the hydrants on every corner. Uh, for us, it is crucial to be able to access those in, in case of a fire. Keeping those cleared is, is essential for us to obtain water and, and uh, help us put the fire out. So. I don't know that I have much to add to that. I would just reiterate, staying off the streets, staying home if you can, allow the plows to do their job so that we can respond if there is an emergency. And keeping those hydrants clear is very important. Uh, we have uh, firefighters out there trying to clear those hydrants, but it takes a while. And I have a feeling that in the next couple of days, they will probably be uh, <clears throat> consumed with the amount of emergency incidents that we have. So. What residents can do is, is stay out the streets and, and keep those hydrants clear for us. Thank you. I just want to reiterate, you've heard the words unusual, you've heard the words normal, what's normal. There's nothing normal about the snow that we're expecting. We are expecting a historic snowfall. As a Minnesotan, part of my birthright is telling you how horrible the Halloween blizzard was in 1991. If the worst case scenarios that we're hearing from meteorologists come true, this could be the second largest snowfall, snow event in state history, second only to that one. Our second message to folks is, please move your car, clear your car off of the street and our crews can clear the snow off of the street. That is absolutely critical to making sure that our emergency response vehicles can get through and can get to people. That's absolutely uh, uh, key. As you can see, our cities, our public work teams, our school districts, uh, our mayors are working together where this is concerned. And even this large coordinated effort is not enough by its, in and of itself to do this, uh, to clear a historic snowfall like this. That's why we need folks to do their part. We need you to stay home so that our public works crews uh, can clear our streets, so that our emergency response crews uh, can get through. Uh, we need you to pay attention to those snow emergency guidelines uh, that you can be e either be found at minneapolis.gov slash snow or stpaul.gov slash snow and stay connected so that we can move through this together. Any other questions? I have, oh, sure. oh, go ahead. It makes, sense. No, it makes sense for you to do that. 
So we work closely with our colleagues in our regulatory services area. We often, on the first night of the snow emergency, will try to have additional staff. That could be a challenge this time around, and so that's, again, a reason that we're asking folks to move their vehicles now. We're telling you, we are going to call a snow emergency. There is no reason to keep your vehicle on that snow emergency route tomorrow. Get it off the snow emergency route. We will have teams out there to ticket and tow, but it'll be challenging just based on some of the other information we're hearing about the storm in terms of even just tow supply uh, in the metro area, I suspect will be really uh, taxed by this storm. So yes, we will ticket in tow, but the important thing is we're giving you the information now to be able to get your vehicle off that snow emergency route well before 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Same message in St. Paul. We will be ticketing and towing. We will be looking out for the safety of our uh, ticketers because they will be out in the elements as well. And as uh, Director Margaret Anderson Kelleher said, it's going to be a strain on the tow drivers. They are going to be pulling people off of interstate roads, um, but we will be ticketing and towing. The most important thing you can do is sign up and follow the rules. We will, both cities will tell you exactly where you can park at any specific moment to know where your cars should be if you can't put them in a garage. And if absolutely you can, take them off the street um, and get them just out of the way of everybody. Thank you, Henry. The, I think it's uh, the most important thing is the ordinance is very clear right now. There is no program for municipal sidewalk shoveling in Minneapolis. We are studying that issue or going to study that issue. However, it's the property owner's responsibility. So if you are a business or if you are an individual, it is your responsibility after the snow there's two different rules, one for businesses, one for residents. Businesses have to clear their snow faster than residents. However, with the volume of snow, I would really recommend that people do multiple shovelings here to keep uh, the sidewalks open. We also, of course, work with Metro Transit. They shovel or clear their own bus stops and their contract bus stops. If people see a bus stop that's not cleared or a sidewalk in Minneapolis, they should call 311 and report it. Uh, a lot of reports come in before the rule actually goes into effect, but we have a system for dealing with that if the snow hasn't stopped. We do not do enforcement until the snow has stopped. So people should and the other thing I'd encourage people to do is help out. This is the time. If you want to really, you know, uh, help your neighbors this is the moment to help your neighbors go out there pick up your shovel get your snowblower going if you have it and help out everybody else on the block uh, kindness cannot be overstated at a time like this and so keeping walkers we will be clearing bike lanes our priority first though is on those main lines and arterial streets so buses and emergency vehicles can go and as well as making sure that uh, we're doing our part on on public sidewalk So uh, in Minneapolis, we're going to evaluate. We did, in the January storm, have to stop trash and recycling pickup for one day. We're not doing that yet. Uh, we are going to plow alleys on a continuous loop. So everyone's alley in Minneapolis should be plowed at least once a day through the storm. We contract some of that work. Some of our folks do that work. We're going to try to keep the alleys open. What we do in Minneapolis is that we uh, really time that to when people's trash and recycling is being picked up. So we are watching those routes carefully. The biggest thing I would say and what happened in January is uh, the garbage trucks are a different sort of truck than the ones behind us. And they're low to the ground and they're heavy 
and they don't move quite as well. So they sometimes can get stuck. If that starts to happen, we'll make a different decision and we'll be very public about it, communicating it out. Yeah, it's certainly not that there's ever a good time for a historic snowfall like this, but with the state tournament coming to an end, there's very little time to make up games or to change venues. Uh, so our state high school league is working very closely with administrators in both districts. That includes coaches. Uh, clearly, we want to be able to communicate to families, um, some of who might make trips, you know, to come to the Metro for various contests. So that communication is really important. Uh, it'll be updated regularly. I would encourage you to check with your local school uh, for that event or that host site that will be hosting that event. And the State High School League will also be uh, sharing information as it pertains to uh, contests or meets or uh, events that they're hosting. So we are actively actually, are you thinking of the ABC ramps downtown? So I can speak to the ABC ramps. We are actively working with MnDOT to try to, try to provide those. They're not available right now, but we are hopeful that by tomorrow, the ABC ramps on the north side of downtown that go over 394, we're working, because they're actually a MnDOT facility that the city manages. Um, certainly working with Metro Transit, and it's a great idea, so thank you, Henry. We'll reach out. We're going to close. Um, the last thing I want to say is one of the things you find out quickly as mayor is just how many variables a snowstorm can throw at you. And so we are telling you our coordinated plans. Uh, we are sure things will uh, evolve as we move through. Uh, there, there is all kinds of opportunity for variables to be thrown at us. Uh, we will continue to provide up-to-date information throughout this snow event as much as we possibly can. Uh, hopefully you've heard this theme so far, but Minneapolis.gov slash snow and stpaul.gov slash snow are the places that you can go uh, for the most up-to-date, for the most accurate information. I'm sure both of our cities will, and also the 311 system in Minneapolis, I'm sure both of our cities will also be continue to be active and present on social media as well to make sure that people have up-to-date information. But we wanted you to know what our plans are. Thank you all for coming out today. Right, and they're just wrapping up this joint news conference between the city of Minneapolis and St. Paul talking about how they are getting ready and preparing for this major winter storm. They're calling it potentially historic and they want the public to take it very seriously. So the two cities, of course, they need to worry about the cars that are parked on the street and they need those cars off the street, basically saying they're opening up a lot of private lots and public lots so that they can use that as a parking management tool over the next couple of days. Both will be calling snow emergencies starting tomorrow evening and they need to get those cars off the street so that the snow plows can get through and emergency vehicles can get through and respond in the event of an emergency. So you had Jacob Fry there, uh, Melvin Carter, talking about uh, everything that they're going to do over the next couple of days and the school systems as well. St. Paul Public Schools also already calling for e-learning days on Wednesday, Thursday, a snow day on Friday. Minneapolis Public Schools calling for e-learning days Wednesday, Thursday and Friday so that families can prepare and start to wrap their heads around this. It will be a multi-day event, and we have the very latest on fox9.com. Also, our weather app, and stick with us on air, online, and with the weather app because we have all of the closings that are going to start pouring in as well. Again, just be careful over the next couple of days and stay with us for all of the information on timing and how this will play out. Even Friday will be impacted by the conditions of this winter storm.